Hello everyone, it's Aisha from God FM. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Happy sale is back. Let me turn this off. So you just love adverts. What is an advert? Hmm. Well, I think it's something that perverts your mind. So it's to add a vert. Vert is similar to vern. Vern is to govern. Vern, govern, go vern, go rule, go rule. To vert must be to implement a thought with a T somehow. Anyway, I'm just being slightly diverted, diverted. <laughs> so many words. Actually, uh, I was thinking about the name of this Technotronic as well. Teach no T R I C on technotronic t r on i c um i find each letter means something is christ means c i found and i means i um so it's pretty simple stuff really okay so my sermon today is pump up the jam and uh the date i think is the 15th um of february 2024. Can you believe we're in 2024? <clears throat> yeah, we had Valentine's, which is a, a veil in time yesterday, where they did a reset. And they must celebrate it on the 14th of February. Valentine's all about the heart. Um, so God is love, so that must have been their way of doing their reset. Um, so, yes, yeah, very interesting, Valentine. The name Valentine as well. Okay. Um, so the actual full sermon is called Pump Up the Jam, Motivation for the Trials in Your Life. And um, I guess you uh, you have to confront everything as you as you face it and uh, you have to pump up your motivation and faith in Christ but also remember that this is already done everything that you're experiencing has been done already because it's written and your purpose here is written you are written in God's book and we want to make sure we're in the right book, <laughs> the book of life. <laughs> my next heading is, you got this. And my daughter actually gave me this hairbrush, which says, you've got this. And I use it quite regularly. And I look at it and I always think, yeah, I have got this. I have got it. It really helps me. Um, I have to remind myself that I've got this. And uh, I strongly recommend that you have things that remind you that you've got this as well. I found, you know, the Word of God is so incredible, but it doesn't stay in your head, does it? It's very hard to get it to stick in there. You can read it, and it goes in one ear and out the other. It's very hard to retain it uh, and utilize it and implement it in a daily working. Um, so I'm finding, anyway, I mean, I'm maybe I'm a bit dumb. I don't know, but uh, for me, I think my brain's just maybe too small. I don't know. Okay, uh, next heading, a bit about me. Well, I've learned that I can do anything. If I believe in Christ, I can climb up roofs, clean them, remove old soggy moss, and generally I can do anything. I found I, I just believe in my ability through Christ. And when I look back at... Uh, all of our history. I think of all the people who discovered things and made things. I look at the 1800s and I see that they had really big aerials. I believe that uh, they must have had 5G then as well. And uh, the 5G towers would have been those big aerials. These are the towers of Babylon that the Lord told us to pull down. I think that everything is connected through aerials and the internet and Bluetooth and electricity, water and gas as well. And I spoke to some friends online on one of the talk shows 
And one of them was telling me about their problems that they're having with their TV, the aerial, the telephone line. They're being, uh, well, not hacked, but they're having difficulties with their phones and their phones are slow and all these sort of things that I've had. And uh, also when I was having some problems with my iCloud, uh, iCloud told me that I had an eSIM card for my phone, which I don't have. So that just gives you an idea of what's really going on. Uh, it's all about your data and your information. Um, and I don't know if it's just me noticing, but I am noticing it. Uh, the, what reminds me of, uh, what this all reminds me of is the body counts in the Bible, you know, when people were counted up. And this is always a bad sign in the Bible. It's usually it's a sign of slavery or enslavement. And uh, it's usually before an exodus of some kind by the Lord. Um, but David also did one and he got into trouble with the Lord about it. Um, <laughs> and I mean, the thing is, well, you know, if the 5G is something that they've had before, this is all about um, the lights and the Bluetooth and the aerials and the, and the internet. But it's also about uh, seeing what you're doing, cameras, your data, f seeing where you are, what you're doing, reading your mind. And uh, they really desperately want to read your mind. Yeah, I really believe they do want to, but they can't. You see, only one person, well, only one can read. And that is our Lord, mighty Jesus. Um, <laughs> but they try and program us and enslave us through our um, programming and they control our minds through the tele -lie vision and getting this all their sort of indoctrination through to you. So I found. In fact, this week I met a friend of mine with a son who used to go to school and now doesn't go to school. They've de-enrolled him. And apparently this is now allowed in England. Um, he will be home educated, which I think is really very interesting indeed. And I wonder how many other people do this. Uh, first time I've actually typed up a sermon, so I'm reading off my notes. Okay, a general catch up. The price of everything has gone up. My friend was telling me that her electricity bill has gone up from $120, approximately maybe $160, to $550, to $600 and something dollars. She's in Alabama and apparently Alabama Power have uh, had a big hoo-ha over it. All the residents in Alabama have kicked off and there was a news article. Uh, but yes, this is what they're doing. And this is definitely a time to start exploring creating your own electricity. And it is quite easy to create. The earth contains our electricity. I believe this quite easy to create. When I've actually done my uh, um, creating of electricity. I will share it with you all for free and uh, we can all create our own electricity. Um, <laughs> remember that in the 1800s we had flying machines. People had created little boxes that they'd step in and uh, they'd fly around. They had bicycles with power and uh, boats as well that were propelled by, you know, their own free electric and this must have been why they did a reset oh yes they had laptops as well uh, because it must have really annoyed them that uh, we were buzzing ourselves around in airplanes and flying things and you know driving around in electric sort of bicycle things whatever we wanted to create we created and we had control of our own destinies and much more control of our lives. But then obviously they must have done this reset because they couldn't control us. If we had free electricity, then they, that is a, a big problem for them because this is one of the biggest uh, ways to have influence on people is that they need a house, they need electric and they need water and they need gas and all these things. And these are the big things they charge you for, plus the council tax and you've got your rent and all that. So, you know, this is a big problem. But electricity is a trickery, of course, don't forget that. 
So this is all about Satan because he isn't the light and Jesus is the light. And light is the quickest uh, substance, if you like, to be able to conduct itself from one place to another. The speed of light is the quickest. Sound is, I think, second. I mean, I don't know. But it's interesting when you start looking at all the symbols of um, these things anyway. I like O2, you know, with O2 and things. Have no fear is my next heading. It is my personal belief that if you start to fear, then the enemy takes hold because you have shown that you are weak in the Lord and in your faith and trust in God. And that is what I have learned over the last year. Now, the thing is, we've got to show who our master is in our actions and through our dedications and commitments and behaviors through Christ in trusting God and following his word by reading the gospel, which is go spell, filling ourselves with the bread of life, as in be read, be read bread. Uh, when you've read the Bible, then you'll have nourished yourself and basically have a gourmet dinner of understanding more about the Lord. But as I've already said before, the more I read the Bible, then I realize that I don't know anything at all. I don't think anyone will know the Lord or understand his Bible fully, even if they dedicated their whole lives to it. I can only tell you what I experienced. I've got some scripture about having no fear. Uh, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. Then we've got 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Isaiah 41, colon 10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Psalms 34, colon 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Romans 8, 15, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Psalms 23, colon 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. Psalm 27, colon 1, of David, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Joshua 1, colon 9. Have I not commended you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Deuteronomy 31, colon 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Psalm 118, colon 6. The Lord is my on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Question mark. <laughs> Love that. John 14, colon 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Psalms 50, colon, 56, colon 3. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Proverbs 29, colon 25. I fear, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. So incredible, the word of God, isn't it? Isaiah 41, colon 13. For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. Isaiah 43, colon 1. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. You are mine. Philippians 4, colon 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God 
which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, just reminded me of uh, something that I noticed. Um, I must point out someone I know is um, has got several injuries on their back and it's really affected them and their ability in their life to walk and all these things. And uh, and yet they're so full of joy in the Lord. And uh, he was saying that it's at this point, you know, when you've reached a point of no return and you can't face anything more and you just don't know what to do, that the Lord steps in and says, I want you. I'll take you as you are. And he will. He'll take you just as you are. You know, you may see yourself as a failure, that you haven't done what you're meant to do, that you've let yourself down or your family down or whatever. But this is not right. You've got to understand that surviving in this world is very hard, very hard indeed. And uh, if you want to make it in this world, you have to join the system of Satan earn your money, you have to be ruthless, you have to be mean, you have to be nasty to earn a crust. And then you've got to scrape it all together and try and make ends meet. And it's impossible to do. If you get a job for a thousand pound, your rent is 750, your your council tax is a hundred and something pounds, then your food bill is, you know, at least a 50 pound a week. And then you've got your mobile phone and you know, all the other things like electricity and water and gas. And I haven't even counted those things and we've already run out of money, haven't we? And so then people end up being with other people and they're just not happy. And if they can't make ends meet, uh, they're made to feel like a villain uh, because you've got bills flying around everywhere. And I once had a bailiff after me and he was after one of my companies and uh but he kept coming to the new company because it was registered at the same address um so he he just wouldn't well no it was the same director as myself as me and so he wouldn't leave me alone and in the end i said to god what can i do with this guy and he said well put everything online so i put my business online and uh this was before covid hit and it was the best decision i ever did and uh, then the guy rang me again and I said, well, he's, I said, uh, he said, where's your office? I said, I don't have one. I'm in the sky now. You can come and get me in the sky if you want. <laughs> and uh, when that, that business shut down in the end. But, you know, um, sometimes it takes time to shut things down. Um, so, yeah, this this is the way the Lord works. Because, uh, you know, the Lord told me, put it online. I sat, stood there. For a little while going, put it online, put it online, put it online. And then it clicked. It was like, oh, put it online. <laughs> so I put it online the next day. And many of my enemies actually approached me in because I had a big shop in town. And I was so proud of my business and everything, you know. And uh, one of my enemies came up to me and said, oh, I see you shutting your office. He was really happy. And uh, I turned around and I said, yes, I know. I looked at him, I was smiling, and he said, so why are you shutting the office? I said, well, would you ever work for anyone for free? And he went, no. I said, well, I've been working for myself for free for many years now, over 14 years, and I'm really tired of it. So uh, now it's time not to work for free. So it took a lot of guts, and I actually walked around the town all a bit glum for the first weekend and then afterwards it clicked that it was just fantastic it was the best thing sometimes losing something you're gaining much more you might think oh it's terrible and terrible but it isn't terrible terrible <clears throat> i've just gone from a really big beautiful place to a tiny little place and uh and it's a big uh big thing uh but you know for me i'm just so happy that i've got a place because there's a lot of people, they're evicted, and they can't find a place, and they end up homeless. So, you know, I had a property come available, and uh, I was able to move into it, and I was very, very grateful, and uh, I'm very pleased wherever I am, and uh, nothing really phases me. And what I also learned through this is you can take everything from me, but you can never take Jesus Christ from me. 
And I want you to know this also. You, no matter what happens, you've always got Jesus with you. This is why all the Philist, um, the um, the gospel uh, preaches the good news of Jesus Christ. Everything is good news because it's your salvation and your life, eternal life. So it doesn't matter what happens here. It what ha- matters what happens in the next life. But it all depends on what you do in this life. It's so very interesting. But you have a helper and Jesus left you this helper, which is the Holy Spirit, which you get when you're reborn in Christ and you're baptized and you believe in Jesus and you've done the sinner's prayer. So you needn't worry that you're alone because God is called I am and I'm with you, he says. I am with you wherever you go. So no matter what you're facing, yeah, I want you to know I've been through the mill for a year. I've had all sorts of things, okay? So it's stalkers, hackers, the people messing with my property, all sorts of things. And I haven't got any family and I haven't got anyone really, I'm, you know. So I'm very, very independent um, and, uh, you know, I can do anything. I can change locks, I can rewire um, a computer and I can install computers, routers, anything, you know, everything. Um, I like taking video machines apart in my spare time, just to give you an idea of what I like doing, yeah? Uh, Playing with with magnets and wires and um, aerials and, uh, you know, speakers and working out how they work and what makes them operate, looking at an operating system of a computer, looking at the, the circuit board of a TV. It's a tiny little circuit board. It's very interesting, actually and how teeny the speakers are, but how good the sound is out of these tiny little speakers. What what wattage you've got on the speaker and why that matters. What's so different between a thousand watts and 40 watts, you know, and trying it out and listening and seeing and seeing what wiring is there and how it's all hooked up. It's got a little bit of copper and a little bit of cardboard and it's got this big frame around it. Um, so, yeah, and it's also very interesting looking at sky television aerials and why why they work like they do and the little operating box that there's attached to it which i'm also about to explore so you know these are the things i mean um i suppose most men like doing these things but when i was a child um i was brought up on a farm and we had loads of cars that had been abandoned and things and we used to sit and tinker with cars and um we used to climb trees and build wind, you know, tree houses type things. And, um, and I always used to love, um, finding the right keys for each lock on the farm because we had several buildings with keys and things. And so I became a bit of an expert on keys and it was always something fascinated me, locks and mechanisms and how they work. And so, you know, I find it all really interesting. And, uh, today I had, uh, I met someone actually when I was moving and, uh, she's a lovely lady from Africa, black lady with pink hair. And I was like, Hey, and she had suitcases and everything. And I was saying, Hey, and she's like, Hey, I said, are you moving? She said, yeah. She said, you're moving. I went, yes. <laughs> she said, where are you moving? I'm down there. She said, Oh, I'm over here. <laughs> I met a lot of people actually on the street as I've been moving around and everything. And, uh, and this uh, lady's called Happy. I said, what's your name? She said, Happy. I said, well, uh, Happy, Happy. And I think uh, I asked her, what's, her, what's your friend's name? She said, Gloria. I went, oh, Gloria. <laughs> oh, was it Maria? Oh, Maria. You know. <laughs> My grand was an opera singer, so uh, I've got a very good, strong voice. I can just shout and the next town will hear me. I don't need a speaker. So, yes, very, very interesting. And she texted me and said, oh, how's things? And I bet you find it lonely on your own. And I said, no, not at all. <laughs> I don't get lonely. Um, I'm a really busy person, you know, um, so... You know, today I removed loads of moss from one of the roofs at the property I'm at. And I just had a good old tidy of the garden. I'm always busy. I like to be, keep busy. I like doing things. And, uh, 
Yeah, so, you know, these are the things that we do. And uh, I'm, I mean, also, I want you to know, no matter how hard it is for you, you've got, uh, you, if well, hopefully you have your eyes and ears, uh, your arms and legs and your hair and, you know, your body. And uh, other people have worse things going on. Um, so, like, some people in Africa, they don't get an education. And they have to kill a bird to eat and things like this. So, please remember how fortunate you are. Always count the blessings. Uh, don't worry about things if they change, you know. I, I also found that as soon as I stopped fighting God on what was going on, you know, I was determined to try and fix everything and try and stay where I was. But that wasn't God's wish and it wasn't his will, I don't think. And so it's a bit like Jonah and the whale. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I think that the Lord is going to be sending me on little journeys all over the world. Um, and now I won't have students to care for and everything. So it's much easier to go off when you don't have little children or people to look after. So it's, yeah, it's very hard to be a parent, actually. Uh, that's the other thing I found. It's great that my children have grown up. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, that's why I wanted to just bring that in. <laughs> um, 1 Peter 3, colon 14, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. So even if you go through troubles and difficulties... You must realize that your treasures are in heaven and you needn't worry. And Isaiah 35, colon 4 says, Say to those who have an anxious heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. In Romans 8, colon 38 to 39, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things separate from us, will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Matthew 10, colon 28, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, Fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 6, colon 34. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. <laughs> Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Psalm 94, colon 19. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Psalm 111, colon 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it, practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Proverbs 19, colon 23. The fear of the Lord leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited by harm. 1 Peter 5, colon 6 to 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. And then Mark 5, colon 36. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And uh, so I think I've covered most of the... So this gives you a really good understanding. I will be posting the written sermon online. Some of the stuff I've been talking about isn't in it because it just came to me. Um, but, you know, really... When you're having difficulty with a certain thing going on in your life, I found that everything happens at the same time. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Satan will attack your personal life. 
he'll attack your finances. He'll attack um, your mental states, your belief in your structure, your uh, trust in God. All of this comes, and sometimes your health also will come under attack because when you're tired and irritable and you're worrying, you're not sleeping, you're not eating. So this also has an impact on your well-being. So you've got to remember that your body is a vessel and it's only temporary, but you've got to try and look after it because you only got one. <laughs> but fasting is very good for the body. Fasting is amazing. Um, and then I've got fear is a liar as my next heading. Fear is a powerful emotion that can grip our hearts, paralyzing us from living a life of purpose and fulfillment. It whispers lies into our minds, convincing us that we are not capable, not worthy and destined for failure. However, in the midst of our darkest moments, we can find solace and strength in the timeless wisdom of the Bible, which serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us that fear is nothing more than a deceitful illusion. It reassures us that we are not alone in our struggles and that we have a higher power who is always by our side, ready to guide us through the storm. By embracing this powerful truth, we can break free from the chains of fear and step into life and the life of courage, faith and resilience. In this, we find we have rest. The Bible doesn't lie, so everything in it is true, and it will transform your life. It's a living book. One two one Timothy, one <laughs> two Timothy one colon seven. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of a sound mind. Reflection. This verse reminds us that this that fear does not come from God. Instead, he empowers us with love, strength, and a clear mind to overcome any fears that may try to hinder us. My friend was telling me about um, Christopher, was it Christopher Columbus? Oh, well, one of the guys uh, in the war times, and they went in a war room to tackle the ways to defeat the enemy. So you got to look at your life a bit like this and maybe go into your war room once a week with your strategies to overcome all the difficulties. And I think that's a very good idea. Obviously with the Lord presence in praying and with your notebook and just have a good chat with the Lord in the war room. <laughs> and when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Uh, trusting in God during times of fear allows us to find comfort and peace. By placing our faith in Him, we can overcome our fears and find strength in His presence. Uh, some of these I've read you already, but I just want to give you some explanations. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And this is Isaiah 41, colon 10. In reflection, this verse assures us that God is always with us, ready to provide strength and support. We need not fear because he promises to uphold us and guide us through our challenges that we face. 1 John 4, colon 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. In reflection, fear and love cannot coexist. When we fully embrace God's perfect love, fear loses its power over us. Trusting in his love enables us to overcome fear and experience true freedom. And uh, then we've got Joshua 1, colon 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And in reflection, God commands us to be strong and courageous, assuring us of his constant presence. We need, we need not fear 
or be discouraged because he promises to be with us, providing us guidance, support in every step that we take. And then we've got Matthew 10, 31. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. In reflection, our worth to God is immeasurable. Knowing this, we can find confidence and courage in his love. We need not fear, for he values us greatly and will always take care of us. Proverbs 3, 5-6 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. In reflection, placing our trust in God and surrendering our own understanding allows him to guide us. When we submit to his will, he will lead us on the right path, removing any fear or uncertainty. Psalm 23, colon 4, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Reflection, in the midst of difficult times, we can find solace in God's presence. His guidance and protection bring comfort dispelling any fear and that may arise. We can walk confidently knowing he is with us. Romans 8, 15, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father, in reflection of this, though the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, we are no longer bound by fear. We have been adopted as children of God, allowing us to approach him with intimacy and trust. Fear has no place in our lives as his beloved children. Then we've got Philippians 4, colon 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Reflection, instead of succumbing to anxiety, we are encouraged to bring our concerns to God through prayer. By doing so, we invite his peace to guard our hearts and minds, surpassing human comprehension. In his presence, fear dissipates. In conclusion, fear is a liar. As the Bible verse reminds us, it deceives us into believing that we are powerless and alone. But the truth is that we have a loving and faithful God who is always by our side. By embracing truth, we can overcome our fears and live a life filled with courage, hope and joy. In modern times, fear seems to be ever-present, constantly bombarding us with worries and anxieties. However, we must remember that fear is not from our master. We have the power to choose faith over fear, to trust in God's promises, and to find strength in his presence. When faced with challenges of uncertainties, let us turn to the word of God for guidance and encouragement. Meditate on verses that remind us of God's faithfulness and his ability to conquer our fears. By immersing ourselves in his truth, we can find peace in the midst of chaos and hope in the face of adversity. Moreover, let us not allow fear to di dictate our actions or hinder us from pursuing our dreams. Instead, let us step out in faith knowing that God is with us every step of the way. As we confront our fears head on, we will discover that they hold no power over us when we trust in the one and only God who is greater than any fear. I pray this has encouraged you. <laughs> so just embrace the love of God and his promises and let the Lord and his Bible and his word guide you through all of your challenges of this current life. With God by yourself, you can conquer any fear and live a life of purpose, courage, and victory. I hope that's helped you. I know it's gone on back quite a bit, but I really wanted to cover over this because 
to get through your trials, you need to overcome what's causing you to um, not get through the trial um, and struggle through it. You have to get closer and closer to God in each time and, and surrender as well. It's always difficult. Um, and then I've got my next heading is, who is my enemy? Enemies of God. Your enemy is anybody who resists you, who contradicts you, who crosses you, who antagonizes you. The enemy in the context is those who resist God, who disobey his laws, who ignore him. So if you translate that down into our situation, your enemy is anybody who resists you, who contradicts you, who crosses you, who antagonizes you, who makes life hard for you, which means that the command, love your enemy, has a, an application to rebellious children, ill-tempered and insensitive, non-listening husbands, neighbors who complain about your dandelions. You may not have called them enemies and they don't call themselves enemies, but that's the kind of illustration we've got here. Most people don't think of themselves as enemies of God, and yet God uses them as illustrations of how he graces people who are not whole towards him. <coughs> um, and I want to illustrate haters of God. Uh, I've been studying Romans uh, with my colleagues at God FM, and we've got um, to Romans 3. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're doing one section at a time. And Romans 3 is taking us a bit longer than in all the others. But it's very interesting. Romans 1, colon, uh, 18 really illustrates the haters of God. God's wrath against sinful humanity. So God really hates our sinful nature. He really does. <laughs> the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what he has has been made so that people are without excuse for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like a mortal human being and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with one other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind so that they do what ought not to be done. They've become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy, although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. They do not only continue to do these things, these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Now, this is straight out the Bible, guys. 
This is Romans 118 onwards, okay? What does this tell you? God knows all about the haters of God and the haters of you, okay? By reading all of this, I want you to understand that God does know about these people. And, but we, God's sons, uh, it's the sunshine on good people and bad people. It rains on good people and bad people. And, uh, God's judgment will come. And it's not for us to judge those people or to get angry or to try and pay them back or whatever. Because Christ came and he paid the penalty for all the sins of all the people that decide to come to Jesus. And there are many people who are murderers and sexual uh, molesters or, you know, thieves or liars or cheats or whatever, sexual, you know, things like, being, you know, with other people, the same sex and all those things, and they've come to God and they gave up all the bad things and they came to Jesus. You see, and that's why we're told not to judge because had you judged them, maybe later they would not have come to God because they would think that our God is not who he is. So God lets them go about their ways. And so we also have to let them go about their ways. We cannot interfere. (laughs) What we can do is we can show the love of Christ in the hope that they will come to the Lord. We're sowing seeds. One day they will hit a problem and it, it will happen. And they will have a choice to pray to God. Now you always find people blame the Lord for their problems, don't they? When they've got a problem, the first person they go to is God. They do. And uh, so I just want to point this out. As frustrating as it is, I mean, I've obviously experienced some very difficult times. And um, I'm hoping that the people who did this will come to know the love of Christ through what they did. Yes? And that they'll become children of God. Okay, obviously they may not, but because hopefully my conduct was correct, I hope that, you know, they will come to know the Lord, no matter what they did, you know. I didn't get angry, didn't shout, scream at them, you know. For me, I had to learn to act very well, be really smiley and happy all the time, even though I was really having a hard time. (laughs) It's very tricky. <coughs> so acting is part of it as well. Put on a brave face. Um, yeah, so my next heading is careful about judging people in your trials. God's righteous judgment is is my next p- part of this. I actually had this scripture, but I don't think I've tell, put in here what it is. Uh, you, therefore, have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human being, pass judgment onto them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness? forbearance and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. But because of your stubbornness and your unrepented heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of the Lord's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will repay each person according to what they have done to those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentiles. For God does not show favoritism. 
All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by their nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written in their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. You see, that's why you just got to leave it to God, because <laughs> really we've got to fear God, you know, because if we start judging people, God might get pissed off with us. And, uh, you know, if we scorn someone or if we see them, you know, our enemy not doing so great and we get some enjoyment out of it, then God will probably pass us some difficulties. So we've got our own problems to deal with as well. Next heading, we are to love our enemies. Luke 6, colon 27 to 36. Love for your enemies. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have done have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind and the ungrateful, he, he, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. You know, I often look at the scripture, and I, I forget about it a lot, I must be honest. You know, it's so, so right what it says. It's easy to love your family. It's easy to love those who love you. It really is, you know, for people who care about you and talk to them and um, to care for them. But to care for those who hate you and persecute you and cause problems for you, it's very hard. It's very hard, isn't it? Think about it. And that's what we're called to do. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I, actually, when uh, this was going on, I, uh, I actually found the people who did it really quite nice people. I, I quite liked them. <laughs> Maybe that's what he wanted, because I could see the funny side. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, my next heading is, what can the enemy do? Nothing. They can try, but nothing can harm you. No weapon formed against you can prosper, as it says in Isaiah 54, 17. And you have to believe it, because it's already written. And these are some Bible verses which I want to give you uh, as weapons against the enemy. Know what God's Word says, so that when the enemy of your soul tells you you are weak, you can fight back with the truth that says, No, according to Isaiah 40, um, 31, in him I am strong. When the enemy suggests you are f a failure, refute him with the truth that says, No, according to Romans 8, 37, I am more than a conqueror. 
When the enemy tells you you are rejected, you can fight back with the truth that says, no, according to Ephesians 1 colon 6, in Jesus, I am accepted. When the enemy suggests that you are not important, you can refute him with the truth that says, no, according to Deuteronomy, I am God's treasured possession. When the enemy tries to convince you that nobody likes you, you can fight back with the truth that says, no, according to Psalm 17, I am the apple of God's eye. When the enemy tells you you are a victim, you can fight back with the truth that says, no, according to 1 Corinthians 15, colon 57, in Christ, I am victorious. Next time the enemy tells you that you are alone, you can refute his lies with the truth that says, no, according to Joshua 1 colon 5, I am never alone. When the enemy tries to convince you that you are ugly, you can fight back with the truth that says, no, according to Psalm 40 colon, 45 colon 11, God says, I am beautiful. When the enemy tells you that you are rejected, you refute him with the truth that says, no, according to 1 John colon 3 colon 1, God loves me so much he adopted me as his child. When the enemy tries to discourage you by telling you that you will never be healed, you can fight back with the truth that says no. According to Isaiah 53 colon 5, by his stripes I am healed. When the enemy tries to convince you that you are worthless and unworthy, you can fight back with the truth that says no. According to John 3 colon 16, Jesus declared me worthy. Beautiful. Strongly recommend you read these every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, how do we behave with our enemies? Romans 12 colon 20, but if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And he's, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Isn't that interesting? I've always found that interesting. Exodus 23 colon 4, if you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey wandering away, you shall surely return it to him. Job 31 colon 29, have I, have I rejoiced at the extinction of my enemy or exalted when evil befell him? Question mark. Now, we meant to go and help them, yeah? Proverbs 24 colon 17, do not rejoice when your enemy falls and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Proverbs 25 colon 21, if your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. Next, you can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4, colon 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, I want to tell you about uh, what's happened to me last week when I did my sermon. Because I've had so many problems with my phones and connections and networks and things like this. I really didn't know what to do because I had to reset up uh, different devices to try and share all the stuff. And this meant I needed internet and I don't have Wi-Fi where I am at the moment. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to do this? Because I need several devices for different things. And um, so anyway, I was, uh, I had two devices that I use on a regular basis for you know, regular work that I do. And then I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll set up this other device and get that working. And then I'll put something, a SIM card inside it with, uh, you know, no credit, but I can set it up and, you know, get it all working or whatever. And, uh, and then I'd have to swap the SIM cards around with the SIMs that had data, which I paid for because I got two with data. It's very fiddly and it's really hard to remember which SIM cards in which device as well. Okay, because certain devices do different things for me. All right. So anyway, I was setting up the third device and, uh, and I'd swapped the SIM cards around again and uh, there was no credit on the SIM card. And uh, so anyway, I went to, to uh, set up this phone and I worked out that uh, the Lord had provided me with free data. 
uh, on this SIM card. So then I tried a couple more SIM cards on the other devices and they also worked with free data. And I didn't pay for the data. I didn't buy data, I just bought the SIM card for a pound. And these were, you know, from the whole experience, what was left that was still working. Because a lot of them stopped working. Because if you don't use them for a while, they stop working. So I was like, okay, this is going to be tough. So, <laughs> but as I say, a miracle. Um, and that reminds me of another miracle which I heard about. There was a guy who was in the army. And uh, the the guys at his uh, the army at work made fun of him and would mock him. And uh, so anyway, he couldn't drive. Um, and there was a Land Rover across uh, from him. And his boss said to him, can you move that Land Rover and uh, put it over in that, uh, in that area over there in that other field? So he went to do this, and uh, but he said, I can't drive. And the, the guy said, well, your God will show you, won't he? Because they were making fun of him. And uh, so anyway, he got into this Land Rover and he moved it. And then, and he parked it with God's help. Well, there was two guys that were mocking him and making fun, right? And that day, they both came to Jesus. You know why? Because the car didn't actually have an engine inside it. <laughs> so, I mean, it really shouldn't have moved at all. Okay. And, and he moved it from one place to the other. And he didn't know how to drive. And it had no engine. <laughs> so, I mean, the miracles of God are just totally incredible. Um, I've had it where I met someone who was homeless and he was on crutches and he'd really hurt himself. His leg was crushed and he was crying and I got talking with him and I started crying with him actually. So I felt so sorry for him. And uh, he told me that his wife had killed herself and he had three kids and the social services were taking the kids and he had nowhere to live and, it, you know, and he crushed his leg and he just didn't want to be here and, he, you know, he's in and out the hospital and and he was also in this sort of homeless hostel which the government provide and he was in, really in a bad way. So I prayed with him and I cried with him and I kissed his head and prayed and whatever because it really touched me. And I said, do you believe in Jesus? He said, well, maybe, maybe not, sort of thing. And so I prayed. And I said, you'll come to Jesus tomorrow. I said, you'll be healed tomorrow. Anyway, the next day he was healed. And he went to the nearest church and he handed his life to Christ. And I was flagged down in my car, which is fully branded with God FM. Um, a couple of, well, about a month later, um, by one of the workers in the, the homeless place. So that's just one story. And I also prayed over someone I know and uh, he was totally epileptic. He'd have epileptic fits up sometimes 10 a day or 15 and he just couldn't work and uh, he was taking drugs and stuff as well and uh, I really liked this guy, he was a good friend of mine and he told me all about this and I was like, well, let's see what God says and the Lord led me to believe it was a demonic thing so I cast out all the demons and in the name of Jesus prayed over him for quite a while and um, anyway, I lost touch with him. And about three years later, he contacted me to tell me that um, he was completely healed. And now he had a child. I think he was married as well. Um, and he doesn't have fits and his life's normal and he loves the Lord and everything, you know, he's pretty much 
come to the Lord over it. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So, okay. Um, my next heading is love truth. Standing for truth can be hard. Where God's word speaks clearly, we have a duty to obey, defend, and proclaim the truth. He has given us, and we should do that. We should share that. We do this with authority that reflects who we are in Christ, with our complete conviction and understanding of who we are. That God has spoken clearly in his word that we have authority in the truth, but not in lies. So if you want to cast out demons, you have to be in the truth. You can't be a liar. This is where you, you need to walk the walk. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to just illustrate that because Satan's strategy is to confuse you, deny and corrupt the truth as much as possible. And that means it's a battle for the truth all the time being able to distinguish between sound doctrine and error as well should be one of the highest priorities for every Christian as should defending the truth against false teaching. And so we've got to take a stand against every aspect of it. And sometimes we'll be asked to do something that is dishonest. We've got to stand up for the Lord and say, no, we can't. Sorry, I can't help you. And also I found that Satan will always come and tempt you with things all the time. So it's it's a constant, constant battle because we've got the spirit and then we've got the flesh. So it's a battle between the spirit and the flesh, I found anyway. <laughs> um, okay, and my next heading is what to do in tough times. Um, what does the Bible say about having strength in difficult moments? Let's read some of the Bible and see what it says in these situations. We've got to cast all our anxieties on him because he cares for you. We've already got that and we talked about. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar in, on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And that's Isaiah 40, colon 31. Um. And we've got, yeah, James 1, colon 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And I think I've read this already, but Philippians 4, colon 6 to 8, so lovely. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence... If there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, which of course is Jesus. Romans 8, colon 18. This is a lovely one. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. I think that's so beautiful. So we've got such glorious things to come. And you need to put all your hope in that and all your trust. And joining up as many people as you can to, to unite them with the body of Christ so that they are also joined and they also get to have some of the bread of life and the ghost spell. Hmm. Um, I also want to remind you that the temple of God is inside you in 1 Corinthians 3, colon 16, don't you know that you're, you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Now, I really want you to think about this because you've got a vessel, which is a body, and um, God is inside you. His spirit is there all the time, all the time. Okay, you've got God living inside you. 
his spirit. That's amazing. And it really is. So you have to also understand that your maker is with you. <laughs> Watching, listening, um, he's got his eye on you, right? In every single way, okay? But not only this, it's a loving thing. So, you know, you're never alone. You've always got the love of Christ with you. His spirit fills you with everything that you need. You just have to ask when you're in trouble. Just say, God, please help me. I'm in trouble. Jesus, please help me. Don't try and do it on your own. You know, lean on God and trust in God. And at that way, it's you're going to have the ultimate solution. <laughs> like in my situation, I think the Lord let me do my thing to show me that he could give me the wisdom, you know, because through prayer we get the wisdom and understanding of the ways to conquer our enemy attacks and things like in the war room. <laughs> but um, it was God ultimately uh, who had to open the doors and close doors. And he is the one that opens doors and closes doors. It is. And if you're under attack, there's so many reasons you could be under attack. It could be because you're preaching the gospel. You're bringing someone in your family to Christ. There could be someone very important to Christ that hasn't been saved yet. And the the message has got through to them and they just happen to confide in you that I actually want to know about God. I want to know about this Jesus that you talk about. And they're about to come to Christ. And you might have bailiffs around you or death suddenly because of this person who's about to be saved. So sometimes your problems aren't because of something you've done or whatever. It's because uh, there's something important that you're meant to be doing and s Satan comes to distract you and take you away from your purpose and your calling on this earth. But also, there might be um, various other things that, you know, goes on. Um, there was a film that I watched, uh, when I got hacked last time. Um, I can't remember what the name is, but it was about a film star. And, um, he was under such a trial and it was so horrendous. <laughs> In the end, uh, he, you know, he was proven that, you know, he wasn't a bad guy, but they, the media got hold of him and they hounded him and they made out that he was a pedophile and, oh, his whole reputation had fallen apart. He ended up in jail um, and it was so horrendous. And his sister died and, oh, and she was a Christian with a, you know, hostel that she'd set up for youngsters, like a youth centre and... um Anyway, he, hand, you know, handed everything over to the Lord and surrendered everything. And uh, in one of the scenes, the radio came on in the car and the Lord was uh, speaking to him. You cannot serve um, God and money, you know. <laughs> Only he could hear it. So he started smashing up the radio. <laughs> and, uh, and he says, what are you doing? <laughs> and he kept saying, does this radio switch off? <laughs> He's getting so angry with this radio. Um, you know, I mean, God can do amazing things. <coughs> I mean, really amazing things. Um, don't ever question whether you're going crazy either. Because God uh, talks to you through music, through the radio, through friends. I've had it where I've asked a question to God. And I've gone, hey, I just want to know, you know, about this, you know. Uh, what's this? Why is this going on, you know? And uh, then some random stranger will just openly talk about the very subject that I had been talking to God about the night before. And they'll give me the answers. They won't even realize that they're answering God's prayers and that God is speaking to me through them. And sometimes I'll get it through music as well. And it's just 
wow, it's blow your mind. It's very, very humbling, actually, to serve such an amazing God and that he loves you so much. You know, I, I keep telling you, and I want to tell you again, the only reason we can have a one-to-one -one relationship with Jesus Christ is because he came here and died on the cross for us. He lived a perfect life. He was a perfect, perfect spotless lamb. Clean, clean, clean. And, uh, and they murdered him. And he died for you. He suffered for you. Don't let it be in vain. And this is so that you can have a relationship and a one-to-one -one with him. Don't ever doubt it. Because Jesus paid such a big price for it. And this is not just for this life. It's for the next life. So that he can walk you through the, the narrow paths and straighten your paths. Sometimes you won't like what happens in order for your path to be straightened. But God knows what's best for you. And so if you just stop worrying, because worry is a terrible thing. You know, when you worry, 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 I think worry makes more worry. I think it uh, it's like a disease and it makes you so worried about worrying and about worrying about this and then you worry about you know your house and then you worry about your car and you worry about your work and you worry about your wife and you worry about your children and you worry about this and uh, you know your dog and he's not well and uh, the garden and the, you know so much to do and oh I can't get it all done and uh, you know it's, uh, and I'm tired and I'm not getting enough sleep and oh uh, da 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 you know, when I was under attack, I would get really tired. And uh, <laughs> and there was times as well, I just said to God, please, please just let me sleep for an hour and let me feel like I've had a whole night's sleep. And he would do that for me. And I'd have so much energy. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, and just to give you a testimony as well, there was this time when the people had really messed with everything. And uh, I thought, oh, my God, this is awful. Jesus, please help me. And the Lord said, what you need to do is start dancing around and proclaim your victory in me that I've solved everything and it's all working great and everything's fine. So I did. And it wasn't. Okay, but I did this and <laughs> within half an hour, all these vans arrived to come and mess with all of the things again in the electric. <laughs> mm. And then uh, they just couldn't get it fixed or whatever to, to go bad again. <laughs> I just sort of laughed to myself and I went, gosh, that was clever, Lord. <laughs> and the Lord was like, you got me. Um yeah, it's so great. It's really good. You just got to trust God. I think that's also, you know, when you're going through things, you're getting tested by the Lord to see how you react, um, you know, and, um, you know, like with me, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's been a challenge, <laughs> but, I'm just so grateful that I have Jesus. Nothing could take Jesus away. And there's so many people that I can help now. I can spend my money more wisely and uh, not dedicate my time to students. I can dedicate my time to trying to open the, the children's Bible school and orphanage in Africa. So this is what I'm planning on doing and raising funds for that and setting up the world radio for God FM. This is what I want to do. And I'm going to put everything into this now. Please pray for, for each other and pray for me as well. Don't forget that we have such strength through prayer. It strengthens us through loving each other, knowing that we've got brothers and sisters, fathers, mothers, grandparents, and children all over the world who love us. 
we're a family and we're united through love and prayer. So we've got to pray for one another all the time. And please don't forget the power of prayer. Um, and don't forget your authority as well to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. We are all called to do it. You don't need a special um, badge. And, you know, you're authorized by the Lord because the good news of Jesus Christ needs to go to everybody. And also, by proclaiming it, you're making it true and real, I think. Not just to you, but to all the others who hear it. Now, when I was going through all this, I was going for a walk in town and I ended up walking down this little path, coastal path, and I met some people there and there was a guy there and I sat and chatted to him and I was telling him all about Jesus, you know, <laughs> and uh, he wasn't uh, being easily convinced. I thought I was having some impact. And then two other people arrived and they sat on a bench nearby behind us and they were sniggering at everything I was saying. And I started to feel quite uncomfortable. Um, one of them had such long nails that they curled round right back to her own fingers. It looked a bit like a witch. And then there was a bloke there and he looked a bit sort of perverted gay or something, you know. Um, and I said, would you like me to pray for you? You know, as they were sniggering, they laughed even more, you know. And I said, well, I think, uh, you know, the Lord really wants you to know that he loves you and that uh, you're deceived, you're deceived, that you don't believe the truth of Jesus Christ. I said, but only you can decide to believe it or not. And so I left them to it. Sometimes I have more joy than others. There was one time I was sitting uh, on this pathway further down, right by the harbour, and it was a, just a beautiful spot, and it overlooked the um, pier. And uh, anyway, these three boys came along with their dogs, and I started preaching the gospel to them. And I, I mean, I couldn't repeat what I said to them, but it was so good that they all handed their lives to Jesus there and then. And I had had an awful day that day. Uh, awful, awful. But <laughs> Jesus what kept me going. So it's like I say, God gives you the words and, uh, and he gives you the wisdom. In every situation, he's there for you. Just have to trust him. So, and with that, I'm going to close with the sinner's prayer. Praise the Lord. I hope you've enjoyed this sermon. Um, pump up the jam. <laughs> Got to pump it up, you know. Get your confidence in the Lord. Pump up your strength, your faith, your love, your joy, your peace your ability to pray, the ability to communicate with your God at a one-to-one -one level, that you can save others. You've got this ability to go and preach the gospel and ensure that others are saved. You may not get through to them, but you'll sow a seed each time. Just one person. And all the heavens rejoice when this happens. Praise the Lord. So, okay, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that we are sinners and we beg forgiveness for our sins. We know that you are God in the flesh and in the word and in the heavens and that you came here and died on the cross for our sins to set us free from death, sin and darkness. We beg your forgiveness for our sins. We wish to follow you wish to follow you and serve you all the days of our lives, no matter the cost. 
We pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that we are pleasing to you. I cast out all demons. I break all hexes and curses or witchcraft or any demonic activity in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. I have authority over the dead. I cast out all demonic entities that are hindering your finances, your life, your home, your children, your pets, your vehicles, your workplace. Any obstacle that is in your way, I break those chains in the mighty name of Jesus. I break the chains of any demonic control of your life. I ask the spirit of truth to come into you, the spirit of peace, joy and happiness and understanding of God's word to come and be breathed into you right this very moment that you will know the truth of Jesus Christ and know that he is with you. I pray this now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will provide everything you need so that you can fulfill your purpose on earth for our Lord, and that you will know the love of Christ, and that he is with you no matter all the battles. You just have to surrender in the mighty name of Jesus. We hand it all to you, Jesus. Take control. Jesus is a friend of mine. I love you, Jesus. (laughs) And we love you, God. Thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for rescuing us. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. We thank you. May we be able to have the strength and the ability to preach the gospel to all those who need to hear it. I pray for all of those people who are enslaved, that they will be freed. And I pray that all those people who are in the dungeons, that the Lord will free them. And also, I pray for all the leaders of all our countries that they will come to the Lord in these times and that they'll come to know that they will have no success or victory in anything unless they come to the God of Israel, the mighty Jesus, our King of kings, Lord of lords. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord. Amen. So it's Aisha from God FM. And uh, I also just want to remind you, I keep uh, having um, group chats with uh, the team at God FM. We've got a few new people also participating in things. We've got Isaac from Ghana, who does ministry and broadcasting and teaching. And then we've also got uh, another lady who's also very, very good at teaching, at the understanding on the... Um, dissecting of the Bible, Megan, and she's a broadcaster, teacher, and she's also in charge of God FM with me now. And uh, so, you know, hopefully we'll be able to bring you lots of good things. We do a Bible school on Monday. We're doing Romans at the moment, Uh, praise the Lord. And it's absolutely amazing. We're loving it strongly recommend uh, getting into the word if you wish to join any of our groups any of our live shows uh, or if you'd like us to do a broadcast and a live show on anything or you just want to come and talk to me please email me admin at godfm.org.uk or you can uh, whatsapp me 0777357788 or my other number 0777878073 uh, so Aisha from God FM. You can find us on Podbean, Spotify, Amazon, Samsung, Chrome, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, Telegram, God FM News, God FM Bible School, God FM Sermons, and God's Home School, and God FM Media for all our videos. We do videos for a lot of our things. So if you want to watch the videos, you need to find them on BitChute, um, ideally, or Telegram. Um, we're having trouble with YouTube with getting audio because everything's license uh, required and Satan owns the licenses for all the broadcasting music. Um, so uh, Rumble, we've had some problems uploading as well. So 
that's not working at the moment for our last sermon last week. Um, but yes, please, please share as much as you can the good news of Jesus and help others. You know, sometimes uh, people want to, to come to Christ and you, you haven't got the ability or what to say. So lead them to God FM. You know, if, if this has helped you, share with others. I've got a, a lady in London and um, she uh, came to Christ and renewed her covenant with the Lord through hearing God FM. And uh, she told lots of her friends about it. And actually, I was contacted by uh, someone from South Africa who's heard my sermons and they were worried about me because I hadn't been online for a few weeks. So I want to thank you for your care and for thinking of me. And uh, it means a great deal to me that, you know, people care, but also that they enjoy these sermons <laughs> because I put so much into them, uh, trying to give you some, you know, encouragement, um, hopefully through all my trials and difficult times, you'll uh, come to know that the Lord is with us. And uh, even, um, you know, somebody preaching the good news can be under attack. You know, just because you're under attack doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Okay. All right. He is there. And uh, everything is possible when you believe in Jesus and submit to him. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you all in Christ, and I hope you have an amazing day on this Sabbath day. It's 9.30 in the evening now, so the Sabbath is finished, but in America it's still Sabbath, I think. <laughs> okay. All the best. Love you lots. It's Aisha from God FM. Take care.